Chapter 2, Monday, May 27th, 1776. I, young in life, by seeming cruel fate, was snatched from Africa's fancied happy seat, that from a father seized his babe beloved, such, such my case, and can I then but pray others may never feel tyrannic sway. That's from Phyllis Wheatley to the Right Honorable William, Earl of Dartmouth. <laughs> Amen, we said together. Pastor Weeks closed his Bible and the funeral was over. Nehemiah drove his shovel into the ground of dirt and pitched some into the open grave. The earth rattled and bounced on the coffin lid. Old Ben put on his hat and walked toward the mule team. Mr. Robert reached for coins to pay the pastor. Ruth drew a line of dust with her toe. My belly flipped with worry. I was breathing hard as if I'd run all the way to the village and back. This was the moment we'd been waiting for, the one that mama promised would come. It was up to me to take care of things, to find a place for us. I had to be bold. I stood up proper the way I had been taught, chin up, eyes down, took Ruth by the hand and walked over to the men. Pardon me, Pastor Weeks, sir, I said. May I ask you something? He set his hat on his head. Certainly, Isabel. I held Ruth's hand tighter. Where do you think we should go? What do you mean, child? I know I'll find work, but I can't figure where to sleep. Me and Ruth, I thought you might know a place. Pastor Weeks frowned. I don't understand what you're saying, Isabel. You return with Mr. Robert here. You and your sister belong to him now. I spoke slowly, saying the words I had practiced in my head since Miss Mary Finch took her last breath, the words that would change everything. Ruth and me are free, Pastor. Miss Finch freed us in her will, Mama too, if she had lived. It was done up legal on paper with wax seals. Mr. Robert snorted. That's enough out of you, girl. Time for us to be on the road to Newport. Was there a will, Pastor Weeks asked him. She didn't need one, Mr. Robert replied. I was Aunt Mary's only relative. I planted my feet firmly in the dirt and fought to keep my voice polite and proper. I saw the will, sir. After the lawyer wrote it, Miss Mary had me read it out loud on account of her eyes being so bad. Slaves don't read, Mr. Robert said. I should beat you for lying, girl. Mr. Weeks held up his hand. It's true, your aunt had some notions. She taught the child herself. I disapproved, of course, only leads to trouble. I spoke up again. We are to be freed, sir. The lawyer, Mr. Cornell, he'll tell you. Ruth and me, we're going to get work and a place of our own to sleep. That's enough, Mr. Robert's eyes narrowed, sorry. <clears throat> That's enough, Mr. Robert narrowed his eyes at me. But Mr. Cornell, I started. Shut your mouth, he snapped. The pastor cleared his throat. Perhaps we should inquire, where is this Cornell, Mr. Robert demanded, Newport? He left for Boston before the blockade, the pastor said, took his papers with him. The girl is lying then, Mr. Robert said. She knows the lawyer is absent and her cause cannot be proved. The sooner I'm rid of her, the better. It's the truth, I blurted out. Ruth looked at me anxiously and gripped my hand tighter. I said silence, Mr. Robert yelled. Isabel, remember your place, Pastor Weeks fumbled with the latch on his Bible. You and your sister belong to Mr. Robert now. He'll be a good master to you. My insides went cold like I'd swallowed water straight from a deep, dark well. This couldn't be happening. Couldn't you send a message to Boston seeking Mr. Cornell? The matter is settled, Mr. Robert pulled on his gloves. If I might borrow your wagon and man for, for the drive to Newport Pastor, I'd be grateful. These girls should bring a decent price at auction. You're selling us? The words flew out of my mouth before I could weigh them. Hush, Isabel, Pastor Weeks cautioned. The cold inside me snaked down to my feet, up around my neck. I shivered in the warm spring sunshine. Ruth bent down and picked up a shiny pebble. What if we were split up? Who would take care of her? I fought back the tears. Pastor Weeks, please, sir. Mr. Robert knocked the dust from his hat. They should go quick. Your wagon will be back by nightfall. The minister placed the Bible in his leather satchel and pulled it over his shoulder. He studied the ground, his hands, Mr. Robert's horse, and the clouds. He did not look at me. You'll be wanting to bring their shoes and blankets, he finally said. They'll fetch a better price that way. True enough. I'll have a word with Ben, explain matters. 
Pastor Weeks walked toward his own slave, keeping a hand on the satchel so it didn't bump against his side. My heart wanted to force my feet to run, but I couldn't feel them. Couldn't feel my hands, nor my arms, nor any part of myself. I had froze solid sticking to the dirt. We were sold once before, back when Ruth was a tiny baby, not even baptized yet. They sold us all from the plantation when old Mr. Malbon had run his debts too high. His bankers wanted their pounds of flesh, our flesh. One by one, they dragged us forward and a man shouted out prices to the crowd of likely buyers and baby Ruth cried and mama shook like a leaf, like the last leaf on a tree and papa, and papa, he didn't want them to bust up our family like we were sheep or hogs. I am a man, he shouted and he was mama's husband and our father. And baby Ruth, she cried and cried, and I thought mama would shatter like a bull when it falls off a table. Papa fought like a lion when they came for him, the strongest lion, roaring. It took five of them with hickory clubs and then mama fainted, and I caught baby Ruth just in time. And there was lion's blood on the ground mixed with the dust, like the very earth was bleeding, we left there. We three in Miss Mary Finch's wagon and everything in the whole world was frozen in ice for nearly two years after that. I opened my mouth to roar, but not a sound escaped. I could not even mule like a kitten. <laughs>